Good morning and welcome to this vehicle repair and maintenance webinar. Today we will be discussing bonding products and applications for body repair. To start the webinar, Stephen will explain why you should choose bonding and Henkel's offering. Lee will then show us some equipment, talk about NVH and finally discuss cleaning and there will be time at the end for a question and answer session. Our presenters today are Lee Goff and Stephen Cranage. Lee has 32 years in the accident repair market. He's previously been a paint sprayer on the workshop floor. He worked for five years in Dubai and he's been at Henkel for 10 years. Stephen has been in the accident repair market for 34 years. He was a panel technician in the 80s and he has been at Henkel for 22 years. I will now hand you over to our experienced presenters, Lee and Steve, and they will take it from here. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Good morning. I hope everybody's well. Glad to be here. So why choose bonding, particularly when we compare against any other traditional joining methods? Well, as we can see, a picture paints uh, a thousand words by those images we can see on that slide there. Lee, which one would you pick? Oh, definitely the one on the far right, the bonding. <laughs> which happens to be bonding, yeah. So I'm sure it's a far smoother, more streamlined uh, finish when you compare against uh, bolts, welding and riveting. We've got exposed uh, heads on the bolts, same with the rivets and um, unsightly uh, welds and weld scars with, uh, with welding. So uh, certainly bonding is a more finished appearance and it looks a lot more pleasing to the eye. So aesthetically, it's a lot more pleasing than any other welding method. So secondly, uh, welding requires quite a bit of skill, particularly with thin, thin metals. I think we all agree there. So with, uh, with bonding, it's a little bit more of a, a simplified process, if you will. So the uh, panel technician in the workshop, they will have their ATA uh, bond and rivet training. That gives them their, their certificate of, of, of competence. Then when they return to the workshop, we can go in there and do some process training on our material. And then realistically, then the, the, the panel technician is really up, up and running to undertake any bonding uh, process within the workshop. Welding. So for that's a little bit different. This really requires quite a bit of skill, um, uh, but and also um, a bit of experience um, to get the best to get the welsh uh, best welding job. Um, particularly, you know, if you um, if you're MIG welding, um, you got to be so careful as you don't burn through in the uh, heat affected zones. That's quite uh, easy to do. To give out if you could take it a little bit too slow, and then equally, if you go to, go too quick, maybe have the wrong uh, gas mix. Uh, and a tip at the wrong angle, then unfortunately what, more, what could happen is it makes the weld uh, a little bit brittle and then further down the line, you'll have, uh, you have some unfortunate failures. So definitely bonding there is a far easier uh, application than, uh, than uh, the modern welding applications. Join us different substrates. This is a key attribute with, with bonding. The bond, uh, most modern adhesives, particularly angle adhesives, um, are about, about the ability to join all manner of different substrates, whether it be um, thin gauge steels, uh, thicker gauge steels, um, stainless steel, mild steel, um, um, any, any composites, uh, boron steels, or what we call high strength steels, and obviously particular aluminium. And also the good thing there is that can actually bond it in any combination. So it's the, not, they haven't got to be similar. However, with, uh, with welding, that is a must. So. With spot welding, as we're, we're aware, ideally it needs to be um, th thinner gauged um, metals to uh, weld through. When we're talking of MIG welding, uh, mag welding, it needs to be similar metals. Um, MIG brazing, yes, you can introduce um, MIG brazing into dissimilar metals. However, because the weld is not as not as strong, it's a little weaker weld. It's not really for structural areas. Um, auto high strength steels or we also know as boron steels. Um, you cannot introduce any heat into boron steel because the, the, the waste manufacturer becomes very brittle when it's exposed to heat and you can't actually even repair it. So that will have to be replaced um, and that will be with bonded and riveting. And then you've got uh, composites, which again will only incorporate riveting and bonded or the combination of the two. Uh, another advantage is the um, using bonding. It keeps the metals integrity. What we mean by that is um, it's, a, uh, it's not introduced any heat. 
it's a two-part material so it's a chemical reaction so there's actually no heat uh, going to be exposed to the metal so what that means is there's going to be no discoloration no distortion and ultimately no fatigue in the metal and lastly it distributes stress evenly so particularly when you're comparing against um, spot welding you've got concentrated pinch points um, so the stresses will be concentrated around those those welded areas however with bonding because we're laying a, um, an adhesive bead all the way around the perimeter of the uh, of the panel any stresses that are evident in the vehicle will then be distributed evenly all the way along the bond line so bonding uh, more benefits um, of bonding so increase of, of body stiffness and uh, travel comfort so um, the oe car manufacturers and uh, commercial as well for that matter they introduced um, adhesives into the production many many years ago uh, and moving forward that will probably increase that's what that's what we're, we're, we're we know they will increase uh, particularly with the electric vehicle uh, era the reason why they do that some of it is down to um, uh, less complicated production uh, and production costs um, but also what it offers a, is a far stronger and stiffer uh, a more uh, torsionally rigid uh, shell so you're not going to get so much torsional twist as you go down the road um, better driving uh, dynamics but at the same time what it means is the manufacturers uh, have been able to introduce um, different metals particularly aluminium and composites which means the vehicle will, will be uh, will weigh a little less so it's more lightweight and consequently there's lower emissions so welding creates a fire risk um, and also there was also a large energy and material cost yes when it's uh, on, on a production line um, it's just a shell um, so it's what we call a uh, you know the body white however we're moving to the uh, your repair shop this is where there is a, a there's a real fire risk yes we have blankets however there's also risk as it could be exposed carpets and fabrics and seats and any stray uh, spark can ignite and cause cause a fire um, obviously there is a, um, a outlay a cost for the equipment initially which uses electricity that's where you know the extra cost comes in um, but also there's a material cost as well which which needs to be added in had to be factored in so you have the welding wire and also have all the gases which is argon helium carbon dioxide and oxygen so that has to be calculated into the, the overall costs as well allows firm thermal ex expansion so because the material has got fillers in there it allows uh, metal the metals to uh, expand and contract uh, and we mentioned before about um, not be able to bond um, dissimilar metals and it's for exactly the same reason so when you weld obviously put introducing a lot of heat sometimes over 3000 degrees um, into the into the panel so welding won't withstand that thermal expansion whereas with adhesives it will do vibration reduction and noise absorption so this is all mvh noise of, of vibration and harshness so um, what the um, adhesive will do is because we put in, in effect a plastic shim in between the two metals, it will suppress any uh, mechanical vibration that come from the vehicle and at the same time uh, reduce any uh, noise that's coming from the engine, also the road noise as well. And what this allows is the manufacturers to, you know, lower the MVH and, uh, and get, you know, get to their limits. Um, Lee here is going to talk about uh, some more material which we have. Uh, some NVH materials which help to lower those limits um, even further and corrosion protection this is a big one so um, as we as we know we, we're aware with bonding you can actually leave the factory e-coat on the uh, the panel you don't have to take away like you do with welding so that is the, the first barrier against any uh, future corrosion uh, but also because we put in a bond within the panel it's acting as a as a seal as well so there's, we've been oxidization in aluminium, uh, no water ingress, no future corrosion. Um, and also when we bond in dissimilar metals, so the, it, again, it act as a barrier, so it eliminates any possibility of any galvanic corrosion as well. So when we look at our offering, so we have a, a product called Terrason <laughs> EP 5055 it's been around for for many years it's widely used by a lot of repair shops in the uk so it's a it's a 250 mil uh tube it's a 2k epoxy high strength um adhesive 
Um, it's solvent free. Um, again, we said it offers excellent uh, cor uh, corrosion prevention. Um, the product has rust inhibitors in there, so if the products can be used on any bare metal areas, as long as you've, you've covered that bare metal, there's going to be no uh, future issues of any corrosion. Um, bonds to a wide range of sub rates, we've, we've, we've mentioned that before, so certainly aluminium and most of your composites and all your steels, uh, no issues with, uh, with adherence to any of those. Um, it's ease of application, we mentioned before, it's, uh, you know, the process is, is a very easy and straightforward process. But the, the product itself is in a concentric design, as you can see, so that means it will fit in most and, and uh, hair and, and guns. Lee's going to touch on equipment a little bit later, um, but that makes the ease, uh, more ease of application. And, and finally, the material carries no um, health hazards. We know there's other products on the market. Um, that are health hazards. So if you check our SDS sheet, there's no health hazard symbol on this uh, on this material. And finally, uh, the material is spot weldable. So uh, any technician is going to use this product. Um, they have around about 60 minutes to be able to spot weld this material if it needs to be spot welded. Obviously, we know we follow manufacturer's methods. So if it, if it says it's got to be welded as well as bonded, it has, to be, it has to be welded and bonded. So 60 minutes gives the technician time to get the panel off it onto the, onto the vehicle, get your gaps right, clamp it down, and then being able to weld through it in a wet state. Um, if, you, if, you, if you leave it a little bit longer, the product will start to skin over to two-pack material, and then there's a chance you may blow a hole in the, uh, blow a hole in the panel. 60 minutes really is more, more than enough time you know, to get that panel onto the, uh, onto the vehicle. So the next product we have, which is a new addition to, uh, to our range, is a product called 5065. So many of the characteristics uh, are carried over from 5055, sorry. So it's still a two-pack uh, high-strength uh, adhesive. It adheres to the same um, a range of, of metals and, and composites, no difference there. Same ease of application because it's the same tube, although albeit it's a slightly smaller tube, it's 175 mil as opposed to 250 mil with a 5055. Still solvent free, um, the same excellent corrosion uh, prevention as the 5055, no health hazard, almost identical, and it's also spot weldable in the same time as the 5055. Where it does differ is the material is now classed as a impact resistant structural adhesive. And we'll look at that in the next couple of slides. But basically what it means is it will absorb energy for any uh, future um, collisions that happen within the vehicle. So key differentiations, and um, this is to confirm the difference between the two products, the 5055 and 5065. 5065, as I mentioned, is a, an IRAS, which is impact resistant structural adhesive. Um, we said what it does is, is um, absorb the energy, but any shock and impact that comes from, from a collision. So it keeps that passion cell, um, it strengthens the passion cell, keeps the occupant safe in the inside the vehicle. Um, so for that reason, the product's got to be applied in, in certain safety critical areas. We'll come on to that on to the next slide so it shows where the product is to be used. But what we'd say is just follow the, the OEM repair miles before applying this adhesive. And lastly, it offers more shear and peel strength than traditional panel bonders and, and suddenly over the 5055. So the biggest difference is the material has, has been rubber toughened. And that rubber toughenedness means it can absorb uh, the energy and the shock from any potential uh, collision. So this slide here, this shows, um, as a, I guess, a quick reference um, application areas. So as it says there, the 5055, one we've been using for, for a long time, that is for outer panel. Outer panels means your door skins, roof skins, uh, rear quarters and, and sill sections. The 5065, um, as we said, it's inner panel or structural panels, so that'd be your upper and lower uh, rail sections or your chassis legs, uh, your strut towers, um, floor members, um, sill sections, and um, areas around your A and B pillar. So there is there a key uh, differentiation between the two products and really where they are uh, they're meant to be used. Lee's now going to come on, he's going to talk a little bit about our equipment and also mentioned these NVH <coughs> materials as well. Over to you, Lee. 
Thank you, Steve. Uh, I'm sure everyone agrees some uh, good information there that um, Steve's passed over. So thank you, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. Um, good to see everyone um, that has uh, logged in. So as Steve said, in the next part of this slideshow, I'd just like to talk about um, some products that fit in with the structural repair model module. So these are NVH products. So um, these are noise vibration hard and harshness products or anti-flutter. But first of all, we just talk about a couple of bits of equipment that um, Henkel can offer you uh, when we, we need to dispense the 5055 and 5065. So on the left of your screen there, you see the big red gun. I'm sure a lot of you have seen this gun before because we do use this gun in our MS sealer application when we're replicating OEM sealer beads. This gun is the Powerline 2 gun. So this gun here is um, a pneumatic gun, air fed. So we plug an airline into this. And what people don't realize with this gun that this has a uh, three to one ratio regulator. So what this means is with every one bar that comes into this gun, the regulator in the handle will boost this up to three bar, making this a very powerful gun. So this makes, so this gun will push the product 5065 and the 5055 out of their tubes very easily. They are quite thick products, so this gun is ideal for that. The second gun, or the gun on the right of your screen there, this is just a, a hand corking gun. So this is a manual power gun, but some people don't realize, again, this trigger has a 26 to one ratio, making it very easy to use. So if you buy a standard corking gun, maybe from a, a DIY store, I think everybody knows that when we're trying to gun the glues out or adhesives, it can be very difficult. This gun makes that very easy. What I would like to mention with both of these guns, these guns are piston driven. This means that you'll have a piston pushing on the back of the cartridge. And we do recommend that you use a piston driven gun, especially with a 5065 and a 5055, especially because of they are epoxies and Basically, we need to make sure that the part A and part B is pushed out of these tubes correctly to make them mix correctly so this, these products cure. So these are the two guns which are recommended by Henkel. So the first products I'd like to talk about with regards to uh, NVH is MS222. So this is what we call an anti-flutter product. So anti-flutter products, these are products which you would put between two panels, like the stiffeners or the strengthener bar. So for instance, we fitted a roof. Now we need to make sure that we put something between the stiffener on the roof or the strengthener on a door skin to absorb vibration and panting of these panels once these um, panels are being fitted. So MS222, this product is ideal for these type of um, applications because unlike PUs or polyurethane sealers, if you were to use these as they cure, PUs shrink. So you may have an instance in a, in a body shop after you've maybe put a door skin on, for instance, the vehicle goes through the, the body shop, goes through the paint shop, the painters paint it, they put heat onto this vehicle to cure the paint. The vehicle comes out the other side of the, the oven and you find you've got some waviness and some creasing down the door. This is because the PU has shrunk during the curing process and pulled the door and the panel in. MS222 will not do this. This is a low modulus product. So the MS222 will not pull or crease the doors or even show any read through in the areas where you've put the sealer. As I say, this product is low modulus. This means that when it cures, this product basically cures to like chewing gum. It's really soft. People think that it's not cured, but it has. And the reason for this is this is so it can absorb the vibration and the panting of this panel. So not to give you any issues later on down the line from maybe the bond line coming apart or cracking because that panel has been vibrating. Now we're gonna watch a small video where um, basically where we can put this um, product into action.
So as you saw there, guys, very easy to use and ideal for the application areas that we spoke about. The product I'd like to talk about is a dual purpose product. So PU9161, this is an app shutter product, but also it can be used as a sound acoustic dampening product. So with the anti-flutter, we can use this in pretty much the same areas that we use the triple two. We use this door stiffeners. We can use this in um, door uh, in the bars in a in a door skin where you have the strength in the bar coming through, but also as well on vans. So on a van we have a large panel. Maybe say on the transit, we use the uh, epoxy structural adhesive, the 5055 and 5065 to fix this panel. Then in the centre of the panel we have stiffener bars or um, strengtheners. This product can be used there as well. So this product is an expanding foam. So don't get this mixed up with um, builder's foam. This is not going to expand out of the area where you're doing a repair. This is not going to expand uncontrollably. Basically, if you were to run a bead of this product down on a, on a panel, that may be the size or thickness of your small finger, this will only expand to the size maybe of your thumb. So this is not going to get out of control and expand way out of the area that you're repairing. This comes in a package of a 50 mil. So this is a cartridge two part package. So this will be dispensed through uh, what we call a Terrason pistol. Very easy to come by gun, which is in most shops. And unlike the, the triple two, this product you gun into the area after you fitted the panel. And we will see that shortly in another video. As I said, this is a dual action product. So this product can be used as sound absorption. So this product can be used in seal areas, A pillars, B pillars, with inside of the rear quarters. And this will reduce the sound and noise vibration like we would do with any other foam acoustic damping product. As we see here in our characteristics, one thing that really is it's worth mentioning is um, the closed cell and the 100% memory. So going back to builder's foam, if you poke your finger into it, you basically put a, a fingerprint into it or a hole into it, the foam will crumble. This product, it doesn't. It's quite soft, it's quite spongy. So if you was to push your finger down onto it, it will expand back into its uh, original state thus not making any any issues when you're using this. So now what we will do is look at a video and this will um, show you exactly where we can put this product. So as you saw there, guys, a great product, easy to use, and uh, very good at the job it does. So the last product I want to talk about is a cleaner, and uh, specifically VR10. So we spoke about all these products, how good they are, and really we all know that um, you know nothing is great unless you do great preparation. So VR10 is our degreasing. So this is a great product for preparing the surfaces or substrates where we're going to apply these products that you've seen. But not only the products that we've seen, but any products throughout the Terrason range. So as you see there, one of the characteristics is universal application. So whether you're using our Terrason plastic, plastic repair range, our filler range, 
again, our epoxy range, our anti-flutter products. Terrason VR10 is our go-to cleaning product for degreasing these surfaces. So unlike other products that we would use in a body shop, this product is low in hydrocarbons. This means when we use this product on the surface, when it cures or evaporates off, this product doesn't leave a greasy, smeary membrane on the panel. This will evaporate to a clean, dust-free area. So we would use this product in the wipe-on, wipe-off scenario. So we would have a lint-free cloth with a dampened, we'd wipe on the area. With our dry cloth, we would wipe off the area, making this substrate clean and ideal for 100% of applications of anything throughout the Terrasom range. Again, you know, people uh, are scared to use these products maybe on painted surfaces or fresh, uh, freshly painted surfaces. This is not going to affect anything or take anything away from that surface. This is not going to affect any e-coats, black primer on new panels. This is a very, very nice product to use in the workshop. So for me, that's it. What I would like to say that um, if you do need any help with any of these products, me and Steve, you know, we can certificate you with the BSI standards. So we can come into your workshops, do some training with your guys, certificate you for any audits you need. So if you do need this, please contact us by the email um, button below. Or if you do know us, just give us a call. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much, Lee and Stephen, for that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So we will shortly have a uh, question and answer session, but just before then, I'd like to introduce you to our new e-learning platform, Loctite Explore. Loctite Explore is an e-learning platform designed for vehicle repair pros. The content is based on more than six to five years of practical experience, and it's 100% free, quick, and certified. At the moment, there is a direct glazing module created to help you become an expert on windscreen replacement, and new VRM modules will be available soon. If you would like to sign up, please see the link on screen next to the slides. Additionally, if you have any further questions which are not answered during the question and answer session or would like to learn more about our products, please press the mail button on screen to contact either Lee or Stephen and get in touch. Thank you. I will now hand over to Lee and Stephen, who will answer some questions in the Q&A section. Oh, well, it's okay. Uh, first question, what does NVH mean? NVH means noise, vibration, harshness. So this basically means that these products will stop the noise and the vibration traveling throughout the panels uh, on your vehicle, your newly repaired vehicle. Uh, okay, Ashley, you've asked, can I have a product sheet sent to yourself? Uh, yes, of course you can. Um, uh, George, I know the easiest thing to do there is, is to uh, uh, click on the link and any information you need, we can send that out, um, no problem at all. So we've got plenty of information which you can have access to, it's not an issue. Uh, another question from Gladys. Question about the guns, are, are those the only alternative? How do I do in a small shop with no pressurized air and high viscosity material? The best gun to use is the, if you don't have any air, you're in a small shop, I would recommend the hand corking gun. The reason for this is because of the 26 to one ratio uh, trigger on this gun, which makes thick products very easy to gun out. So as I said before, if you're buying a cheap gun from maybe a DIY store, you know, you really struggle, you get your grip on your hand is very difficult to use. So I would use the hand corking gun, which um, if you need, we can point you in the right direction to purchase one of these. Alternative, also I say that could possibly um, look at a battery repair gun. Which might make it a little, a little Indeed, bit easier. Yes, yeah, yeah. 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 There are, you know, we do have battery power guns available. So if this is uh, something that you need to look at, again, we can uh, supply you with a battery power gun. Not a problem. Good. 
good one, Steve. That was it. So, uh, someone's asked here, Paul and Loco. Paul, does the Terran range, Terran range cover any other technologies other than bonding? Well, yes. Um, I'll answer that one. Yeah, Terrason is a, you know, it's a, it's, it's a whole range. So we, we cover anything from um, body sealers uh, to coatings, plaster repair, dark glazing, and then obviously uh, we've got structural bonding as well. So yes, we do. So again, any any um, any information you need from any of our other <coughs> typical uh, modules, um, please get in touch, and we can supply with um, as much information as you need. Uh, another question here: Are Steve and Lee able to visit anywhere in the country? Um, we can, but uh, we don't. We, uh, you know, it's not just me and Steve uh, on the VRM team. Yeah, we've got helicopters. Yeah, we do have uh, other technicians that are on our team. Uh, we have a guy called Barry Lewis and another chap by the name of Julian Payment. So uh, don't fear, you know, you don't ha won't have to wait forever for us, to, me and Steve, to come around. You know, we are the best looking of the team. Don't get me wrong. But Absolutely. unfortunately, you'd have to uh, maybe contact a couple of the other guys. So yeah, do not fear. We will be able to uh, visit you anywhere you are in the country. No problem. Yeah. Any more questions? Yeah. Oh, I think that's it for the moment. Yes. Any more questions? Have you got any questions, George? No. Good. Well, thank you guys yeah, again. Thank you. you know, thanks for tuning in. You know, there was quite a lot of people on the list there that um, we're good to see their names. Um, and as we say, if you need anything, please yeah. let us know. So we hope it was been informative. I hope it's been uh, you know worthwhile tuning in for for the last uh, thirty odd minutes. So uh, we hope to do some more again in the future. Um, but yeah, as Lee said, please. Get all of us, uh, whichever way you can, or the by phone or by email. I'd be more than happy to uh, to help you out in in your workshop and distribution alike. So many thank you, and if we don't speak before, have a great Christmas. Be good, thank you.